welcome to our 35th episode of Black Dance Stories. Here's a note about why we are here. Our dance world was pummeled by COVID-19 and Black dance artists are finding ways to talk about life during this time. Our world was further turned upside down after horrible events ensued nationally and globally, bringing attention yet again to the need for the Black Lives Matter movement. Black dance artists have not been quiet. Black dance artists have been doing the work. Black dance artists continue to make work. To stay involved, we hold these weekly impromptu discussions and tell stories, Black dance stories. This is one action and we will stay involved. We are a community working together to support, uphold, highlight, and celebrate Black creatives. Tonight, it's our 35th episode of what we hope will be many stories told in the artist's own voices. Tonight, it's Robert Garland and Tendai Koumba's turn. Yes. Please meet some of our BDS family. I will go first. I am Charmaine Warren. I'm a light-skinned Jamaican. I am the great granddaughter of Ida Boyd, granddaughter of Solomon Goldson and Ruby Chapman, and one of nine children by Theophilus Warren and my 95-year-old mother, Perlene Warren, who lives in Jamaica. I am the aunt and grand aunt to about 25 nieces and nephews at last count. I am a non-disabled black woman. Now and forever, I promise to acknowledge those who came before me and have toiled to make it possible for me to be present on this land. Today, I give homage to the native people by acknowledging that I live on the stolen land of the indigenous Lenape people now known as Montclair, New Jersey, with my husband, photographer and graphic artist, Tony Turner. Our daughter, Ashe Turner, a black ballerina with locks is in her junior year at Boston Conservatory. I have locks that are pulled on top of my head. I'm wearing an earth tone striped blouse and large teal earrings. Behind me are photos of our family, a large plant, a lamp and African masks. Happy Black Dance Story Thursday, BDS family. Thank you for showing up, for spreading the word about our love fest. We love you. I turn it over to Kimani. Yes, we love you. I love you, Charmaine. I love you, <laughs> I love you all. Welcome, yes. Of course, in the words of Gloria Grimes, delicious, delightful dancing night. The importance of acknowledging our familial and dance legacies is an essential tradition. And in keeping with the tradition, I recognize my indigenous brothers and sisters as the first step in moving toward action. With profound respect, I honor and acknowledge the Lenape, whose stolen land I am zooming from, currently known as the village of Harlem. I am a black, non-disabled woman, and I live with my 10-year-old son. I'm sitting in my dining room, surrounded by white walls, I have golden hair with close natural curls. I am wearing a tan blouse with yellow white flowers and green stems. And I have sterling silver bodice earrings. I am the granddaughter of Lucille Madison, a wise and giving English professor. I teach because of her. Daughter of Ronald Augustus Fowlin, Jamaican warrior and gourmet chef, and Anne Fowlin, rebel and Renaissance woman. I dance because of them. My son Tamayo keeps me present as I witness this growing boy and I am in awe of his amazing talents and his blossoming spirit. Makada, I turn it over to you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Makada Lily and welcome cozy Margiros Roni. I'm in this human experience as an able-bodied black indigenous American woman, pronouns she, her, and they in acknowledgement of my ancestors and spirit team that is all around me, that is also me. I come from a long generational line of artists, 
and energetic intuitives, both on my maternal and paternal lines, the love Roni lines. Yes which extend through so many amazing, powerful people, names, and ancestors that I sent my, I send my love and gratitude to every day by just being here. I am the daughter of Mia Love and Antoine Roney, sister of Kojo Roney, Zipporah Roney, and Turquoise Love. All of us beautiful, powerful artists. I am Zooming from Harlem, which was respectful and harmoniously occupied by the unseated Lenape. I am a life, body, soul alchemist in which I turn ethereal matter into what we call dance, art, poetry, and whatever else. My soul is called to channel and express love, light, and truth. I am sitting in my loft bedroom on a love seat. Um, behind me are some plants and a bookshelf a white wall. I am wearing a spaghetti strap tube top that's beige. My hair is part down the middle in a low bun. Um, and I have a Hamsa neck, uh, rose gold necklace. Um, so I want to share with everyone who's watching that community is such a big oh. part of our dance stories, as we know. So we want to know who's watching tonight. Yes like this video, drop some comments in the chat, say hello where you're watching from. Feel free to just engage, ask questions and share love. Also, please follow us on our social media. For that, on our social media, we illuminate our amazing community. So we wanna always thank you everyone for your love and continual support. And without further ado, Everyone grab yourself some wine, water, tea, your cup of happy, and let's cheers to Black Dance Stories. Cheers. Put the two tea bags. <laughs> <laughs> and I turn it to you, Tumani. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Please consider donating, right? We want to keep this going, and we can't do it, as Makara says, without your support. So we would appreciate the donations. And I would like to also say, we will always stay vi vigilant. Yeah. Our BDS team will continue to stand in solidarity with our sisters and brothers all over the world, with all those who want an immediate end to racial violence and systemic racism. So please stand with us. All right, and I turn it over to Charmaine. Thank you, Kimani. Look at us, look at us. Yes, us. We're here again and really, 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 we mean it. Stay vigilant, everybody. There's so much going on and we want to support all of our brothers and sisters. And I know why you're here tonight. We love why you're here tonight. Kimani and Makita are going to go away for a little bit, but they'll be back. And I get to say, come on in, Robert Garland. Come on in, Robert Garland. I can't wait to see you. Hi, Robert. Hi there, Charmaine. Here's How are you? <laughs> yes, yes. Without taking a sip. Mm -hmm. mm. Welcome. Introduce yourself and, and tell us something, something. Well, I'm not going to be. Not anywhere near as poetic as the three lovely women that came before me. Uh, my name is Robert Garland and I am resident choreographer for the Dance Theater Harlem Company. And I am director of the Dance Theater Harlem School. And these are two roles that are very familiar to me because Arthur Mitchell, uh, the founder and artistic director emeritus at one point, and now the late Arthur Mitchell put me in these roles a, a, a while ago and, and I continue in them. Um, I'm pleased as punch to see one of my former students on this project, Ms. Makata, who's a lovely, lovely dancer. So amazing. And, and, and not only that, but a, but a dedicated and smart artist, you know, which is always what Arthur Mitchell wanted. Um, I guess I should give a description, Charmaine, is that right? <laughs> I'm wearing an orange shirt uh, to over my left shoulder, or, or my, I'm sorry, you're looking at me over my right shoulder. 
Uh, there's a picture of Gary DeLoach. Uh, the reason that picture is there is because uh, he is the one responsible for me being here uh, during my Juilliard years. Um, I, I owe him so much. The man above him, I owe a lot as well. Mr. Uh, 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 James Baldwin, that's his Time cover magazine. Um, I had a cat named Baldwin. I was so uh, enthused with him. I, I often tell people James Baldwin got me through uh, the place that's over this other shoulder, Juilliard. Um, that's my Juilliard degree. And then above that is a photograph that um, is a painting of a photograph from a ballet that I did with Dancing of Harlem of me uh, from a ballet called Troy Gaines, Troy Gaines by Robert North. Um, and, um, and actually, it's really funny. The picture above me um, was found in a mall in uh, Philadelphia. At the time, one of our Dancing of Harlem ballerinas, Felicity de Jaeger, who was from South Africa, was getting married to Randall Cunningham, the Eagles quarterback, a uh, Philadelphia Eagles quarterback. And so they were both wandering on a mall in Philly. And she was like, Rob, there's a, somebody did a painting of the picture of you from Troy Games. Um, this, this picture actually was part of a campaign for um, Chase, uh, at that time, Chase Manhattan Bank. Um, and I was honored to have Arthur Mitchell choose to have me figured so prominently in that campaign. And so um, that's it, Charmaine. Put, how far back do you want to go? Wow, I, I can go back to Philadelphia Dance Company, man. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia Dance Company, you know, that's where I got my first company uh, introduction. I was actually the youngest a uh, member of the Philadelphia Dance Company at that time, I was 15. Um, most of the people in the company at the time were 21, 22. A lot of them were either in college or worked real jobs. Um, so all the rehearsing happened in the evening. Um, it, it was an amazing experience because um, I learned so much from these people that I was surrounded by. Um, but the most amazing part of that a journey was there was a moment when I looked up and there was this really, you know, brown skinned man standing in the door with an Afro and it was Alvin Ailey. And I was like, wow, they were like, Alvin's here, Alvin's here, you know? And, um, and it started from that moment, um, kind of a tradition of, of going through the Philadelphia Dance Company to move into the Ailey Company. Most of the people I danced with, um, I, at Philadelphia, I went to Juilliard because I was young. My mother said, go to college. And, um, and then on the other side, the older people that I danced at Florodenka ended up dancing with um, the Ailey Company, one of whom was my cousin, Deborah Manning, who was a, a great dancer there. She actually uh, was, in fact, I posted it on my Facebook page recently. Um, she was chosen by Alvin to record uh, for posterity the solo cry which was uh, created on another Philadelphia woman, Miss Judith Jamison. Um, I, I'm sure that was not lost on Alvin at all, that um, he had this second beautiful bird, um, wonderfully balletically trained, Alvin loved that, you know, uh, to, to, to go into that role. And so, um, so that was the beginning, uh, Philadanko. Then I came to the Juilliard. <laughs> Wait, wait, shouldn't you go back and talk about the Grand Dame? Miss Joan Myers Brown. First of all, you know, it was the most amazing thing for me because um, I had I had only seen um, once, and was when I, the first time I saw a woman in point shoes was a picture of Joan Myers Brown in her uh, studio. Uh, it was a, she was a ballet dancer. She taught us ballet. She had the most incredible feet, by the way. Incredible ballet class as well. Very, it made you very, very strong. Um, and so Joan Myers Brown is the founder of the Philadelphia Dance Company. And, um, and she uh, just made sure as a young person, I had this incredible palette of influences. Um, I had Billy Wilson, black, major black choreographers, Billy Wilson, who was her cousin. You know, uh, also worked with um, uh, Tally Beatty there. But then also she had people that were 
former members of the New York City Ballet, Roy Tobias, created a ballet for us, who danced in the City Ballet before Arthur Mitchell, and also William Dollar, who created a Stravinsky Ballet on it. And that was literally on point. Um, so, so it was a wonderful introduction to the possibility. So by the time I saw Dance of Harlem, those two influences matched. And I said, you know what? I think that's where I want to dance. Not quite sure, but I think that's where I want to dance. So, but after school. And so I moved to, to New York and um, moved in with Gary DeLoach, who's, uh, I, and I, the, the deal was that I would watch his apartment when he went on the road because they traveled a lot. You know, and and I did that my years at Juilliard. So, yeah. What what did Auntie Joan say when you said I'm going to New York? You know, she was actually okay with it. You know, um, I often uh, uh, step went and took class with them while I was still in the, uh, at Juilliard. You know, because you maintain those connections. Um, and then sometimes I did not go back home. I, I I actually, you know, there's a funny story. One of the stars of Juilliard at the time that everybody was like, oh, he's so amazing, was this guy, um, Ohad Naharin. And, and Ohad actually, uh, I danced with him when he, in the beginnings of his early start of making a company way back then. Yeah, uh, this is pre Gaga. <laughs> yes, so, so yeah. And so then you're at Juilliard now. I'm at Juilliard now, absolutely, absolutely. You know, this was post-civil rights. So mm. there was that moment where they were just letting all of us in there. So I had a healthy cadre of, um, of, of Black colleagues there, beautiful dancers, beautiful. This girl, Robin Tasha Ford from DC, who was amazing, beautiful. Now we ended up dancing with Keith Lee actually together in some like side gigs that Keith Lee had a small contemporary dance company while, wow. and Christopher Huggins as well was a part of that, and Mel Tomlinson. Yeah, and so, um, but then the other people, there were people from, from uh, uh, LaGuardia that were just beautiful dancers, Anastasia Bain, sure, uh, uh, just, uh, it, the, the list is just huge. And so um, that was a wonderful experience because they got me through, or we got each other through mm -hmm. the Juilliard experience because it was before people be, even understood that uh, people of color had a certain experience. We were sort of under the radar still. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Do you yeah. think about do you think about those times and wish that you knew what you know now then? You know, it, it's very interesting. Um, I uh, actually know because there was something about those times when you're that young. And, and willing to operate on pure emotion that becomes a very, um, a, your, your responses are much more visceral. Um, I do remember um, there was a moment where because of Juilliard, you know, you could not dance. There was one concert a year, one major concert, and no one could dance in the, that major concert uh, except for sophomore, juniors, and seniors. And so the freshmen, the only thing that you had access to as a performance was a Baroque dance performance, meaning uh, that you, you wore the finery of the Baroque period and you did the Baroque dance. And it was a, it's a lovely, you know, we studied it and it was wonderful. And there was an audition for this piece. And so all the freshmen were like, we're told, you know, go, you know, to the audition and, you know, and whatever. And so I was on my way there. And I was stopped in the hall by a girl and she said, why are you going there? And I said, well, I'm going to audition for this Baroque piece. She said, well, I don't know if you're aware of this, but, you know, people like you, you know, typically don't do uh, that sort of thing. And this was another fellow student who was like literally in my freshman class. So I, okay, and this is youth, the woman, the riot act that was handling the audition, Wendy Hillier, God bless her soul. And then I went up to Martha Hill's office. Um, and I read her the riot act as well. And, um, and, 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 you know, it was interesting because Martha Hill was the founder of Bennington College's uh, dance department. She was literally the, the model for women in modern dance. So she understood that moment, but, but it was lost on her. I think that this was, a, this was wrong. 
But she did listen to me. And literally, she didn't say anything. I went in there. I just kind of just went off and I left. And literally the next year, they had um, uh, another colleague of mine in the Baroque dancing. Um, and then from that point on, there was always colleagues in the Baroque dancing. I don't think now that uh, it's run by a former DTH ballerina, Julie at, at Juilliard, Miss Alicia Graff. I don't think she has Baroque dancing, but it is a wonderful thing to, to learn and perform that because it does give you the basics of where ballet came from. Um, but, but it is also very expensive because of the costume. Yeah. Did you have an aha moment, like when you were at Philodenko and Mr. Ailey walked in the room while you were at Juilliard? And we're not even at DTH and Mr. Mitchell yet. Did you have that at Oh, Juilliard? yes, because oh. I, think, I think one of the things that my little tirade might have helped uh, initiate was, uh, you know, uh, Juilliard had a fine stable of Black graduates. Marilyn Banks was a graduate from Juilliard. Shirley Black Brown was a graduate from Juilliard. Ralph Farrington as well. Beautiful stable of graduates, but the, the one that knocked my socks off was Mary Barnett, you know? And so Mary Barnett came and taught us games. She taught us Donald McHale's games. And so it was a wonderful moment where we, got to be immersed in a culture that we knew as the Black dance students. And then the students that danced with us that were non-Black got to be inside of this wonderful piece that is actually about so much. It's, such a, it's a very, very beautiful piece. So games was a wonderful experience. And, you know, to this day, I remember I was setting a ballet on a school in Miami, um, New World School of the Arts, which is run by Danny Lewis, who's a Juilliard graduate as well, and was a teacher there when I was there. But he had also hired Donald McHale to set something on that program on, on the students the same year. And I remember I these cherished moments walking back to the hotel with Donald McHale, just like talking to him about everything, rainbow, games, you know, his aesthetic, like how he came, how it came to him. Like he was a beautiful, beautiful person who Mr. Mitchell loved dearly as well. I mean, they were extremely close um, up until the moment when he said, I think I'm going to go do this New York City Ballet thing, so. All right, maybe you just did it, the transition to DTH, because you just introduced Mr. Mitchell. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, I, I actually met Mr. Mitchell uh, or saw him uh, I used to sneak back. I was a, I was the king of sneaking backstage. Charmaine, you know you did it too. Yes, Come I on, did. <laughs> at City Center, we oh. could run around that thing. That, and the <laughs> right. I remember going in at intermission and seeing. Yes. The, those were the days. Listen, those were the days, man. It was like if you needed to see something, you figured out how to do it, hell or high water. And exactly. And so I remember being in Philadelphia when I was 18 years old before I got to New York oh. and uh, being at the theater and sneaking back and watching Arthur Mitchell rehearse this one young lady in uh, Forces of Rhythm. And, I, and he saw me in the corner of the wing. And I believe that he kind of turned it on at that moment, you know? And so, you know, it was very interesting. So when I, when I got to DTH later on, I did ask him about that. I was like, do you remember your, I was like, oh, you were that young man? I was like, yes, I was that young man. He was rehearsing this girl in a fan oh. kick in Lewis's Forces of Rhythm. Uh, a beautiful uh, girl from England, English dancer, Julie Felix. Um, and so, so yeah, so, and he was just my mentor, my dad, my everything, you know. Uh, he is responsible for who I am. And he also uh, gave me more than dance. You know, because as a Black person, I felt that I needed more than dance. I love dance, yeah. but I always needed more than that. James Baldwin did that for me. Gary did that for me. Arthur Mitchell did that for me. So, yeah. And so, now, you're, now you're the resident choreographer. Yeah, yeah. Who would have yeah. thunk it? The little Who? boy that was looking <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, it was, you know, as I look back on it, the amount of trust that Arthur Mitchell put in me to take on that, 
was um was was a lot. It was a lot. But he did tell me, and I rarely talk about this, pardon me. He did tell me the reason why. He said, you know, he'd realized that, you know, every other institution had had someone that was in-house that could create things for the artists that were there, you know, and and um and he'd always considered it, but I never thought of committing to it until he saw that I had the interest that I had as an as a burgeoning choreographer. And so um, he hired uh, uh, Bessie Schoenberg and Bessie Schoenberg did several choreographic workshops. I was in, she did three, I was in her third. Um, and I worked directly with her on my first piece on the Dancer Hall Ensemble uh, to Mozart. And I remember her saying, oh wow, Mozart, you're ambitious. And I was like, well, you know, I'm a Juilliard grad. So I kind of had a great music background you know, um, I, I always say that Julie, it's sort of a music school with acting and dance as a sidebar, <laughs> you know, like your music has got to be on point there. Okay. Yeah. And even if you're, a, you know, a dancer. And so basically um, I worked with Bessie to create a first work and that went well and it kind of uh, went on from there. Yeah. You love it. You just love choreographing, don't you? I do. I do. Uh, I like creating space. It's always, I would call myself sort of a dance architect. Like dances are like houses. And so when you're putting together things for people, you know, you have to be very particular because people are particular, you know. So the chair's got to be here. The lamp's got to be there. You know, you got to make things right so that they can live within it, so that they can live within that space, you know. Um, and to this day, I, I still kind of uh, uh, live by that philosophy. I make houses for them. And there's a moment when you go, it's yours, go for it, you know, and they go and they live. Yeah. So this is a selfish thing. One of the things I love most about your ballets is they are culture heavy or have some culture in them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And where does that come from? And, and what makes it stay? What will make it stay? You know, initially it came from um, a desire to experience myself in one place. You know, um, at Dancer to Harlem, one of the beauties that Arthur Mitchell created was having um, an artist such as Balanchine and an artist like Jeffrey Holder at the same level, you know, is this the same space? And, um, and it was a beautiful thing. But I often wondered, would I be able to, in a, in a much more integrated way, um, put the, the, that Western European art from a ballet in connection with things that I knew to create something new? Um, and, and it wasn't, and, and, and not for nothing, as they say, I was very much aware of the fact that this had already been done by George Balanchine. He borrowed. Uh, uh, so much from us, and, and, and admittedly so. Um, he did, uh, you know, admittedly so. And also um, Jerome Robbins, not so admittedly so, but somewhat as well, you know. And so so, so I felt like, you know, I think it's time like a Black person to that, try that approach maybe. How about that? <laughs> you know? And Do you have so, a favorite ballet of yours? Gosh, you know, it is, it is, I think it was the not the last one that didn't premiere. I had a ballet that was supposed to premiere at pre at, during the pandemic in March uh, to Stevie Wonder's music called Higher Ground. But the ballet before that, um, which was Nyman, uh, Nyman String Quartet Number no. Two, which was ostensibly a pure dance piece, done of course in a style that I like. But there was a solo that I did for the beautiful, wonderful Devon Doon. Devon. My absolute darling of a son, um, where um, I wanted to acknowledge the 1967 or 68 Olympic um, photograph with the gentleman with the fist raised, you know, because our world was already moving in that direction. Um, but 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 it, it wasn't um, aggressively in that way. It also combined the path the pathos that can exist within the black male body as well, which um, is sort of a theme with me. Um, I've often, I will choreograph um, solos for 
men who initially are black. Other men have come into them, but initially they've been black men. Um, and, and, and just to have the world experience them in ways that, you know, they typically would not, you know, and it always was much more uh, impressive than I actually first thought it, thought it was. Nubach has a huge soul at the beginning of the second movement um, for a male, and it has that, that idea. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I'll keep doing that until people understand what, the, what that is and that we are 360 degrees when we are Black men, you know. And the same thing goes for Arthur Mitchell. I mean, I often saw that people uh, minimized him by, by saying, oh, he's the guy that created a company for Black ballet dancers. There was a huge artistic and intellectual backing to him that I'm still, you know, looking to try to find a way to get people to under, yeah. understand it's bigger than that. Even Damian Wetzel, we did a panel with New York City Ballet the other day. Damian Wetzel had the most beautiful story about working with Arthur Mitchell on Slaughter on 10th Avenue. And so, so it is definitely a, a um, universal idea. So. Come on, Black Dance Stories. Yeah. Come on, Black Dance mm -hmm. Stories. So it's time to bring our friend Tendai. Come on in. And you all have lots of friends here. So I'm going to give a little bit of shout out to a couple of the folks here. Thank you all for being here. Je and forgive me if I say something. Hey, Tendai. Jacob Penante, Victoria Yang, Daphne Gaither, Kayla Dalder, Liliana. Hannans, Elizabeth Zimmer is here, Amy Casello is here, Kenneth Prado, Maxine Montelez, Hayden Tencher, Trevian Pollard, hey Trevian, Bruce Rodriguez, Anne Davidson, Laura Marchese, and Carlos Arizu. Come on, friends, be here. Cheers, and I welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, I got my red to match yours. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the red to match mine. All right. Yeah. I'm going to leave y'all alone for a little bit. Have Ooh. a good old time. <laughs> Hi. All right. Hi, Tendai. How you doing, Mr. Garland? I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> I know, I know that's right. highly favored. Well, I often like to say black, blessed, and highly favored. Right, because that's that's the best, that's the part of the blessing. Okay. See, there you go, there you go, there you go. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so as we were talking that. before the before the show started, you're from Atlanta. I am. I am from Atlanta. And now you know everybody and their mama moving to Atlanta right now. I know. I'm. I'm kind of glad I got out while I could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm. A, you know, looking at the property tax, might go back and get something. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's turned into. Uh, um, I mean, another form of a mecca than it already was. So yes, definitely absolutely. Taking on a life of its own, and I mean, with DTH, my connection with Nina and Waverly with Balethnik, that was like. Yes. Very, um, I was really grateful for that for that space and that experience because mm. um you know just as a little black brown ballerina you know mm -hmm, trying to find mm -hmm. spaces especially in the south you know yeah oh my god yes yeah you know and the, the and just the energy and and being in a space that felt um that there was a, this healthy challenge of of not demeaning any aspect of who you were but really like calling you to show up and i remember yeah. when i auditioned for um I, I did leopard tail a couple of years like i think two oh years. did you get out mm -hmm. i okay. did i did i was a i was a gazelle Wait, we should we should let the audience know know who what oh leopard yeah tail is. Leopard Tail <laughs> is this amazing ballet by Balefnik, which is a company founded by Nina and Waverly. What's Waverly? Lucas. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. In Atlanta, Georgia. And they are an amazing company of melanated bodies on um, point yes. and flying and just from the babies all the way up. And it's just. Um, Absolutely. It was, yeah, so and and I just want to let the folks know too that Nina and Waverly are Dance of Harlem alum. Yes. So so the space that Tendai 
uh, worked in already had brown tights and brown point shoes mm-hmm. way before some of the manufacturers just this year are catching mm-hmm. on to doing. So that's mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. And, and, and serious it's serious tutorials too. too. Mm-hmm. Serious tutorials of like, like this is how we get to our shade. This is how you get your tights to your shade. Don't try That's chips. right. You know? yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you know, it's funny. I, I've been noticing, even though I appreciate Freeds and Capizio and a lot of the manufacturers for doing what they're doing, there is still some work that should be done. It's almost like a, a spiritual thing, actually, that process of mm-hmm. making the brown tights and brown shoes match you completely. It's a lovely thing. Right? Yeah, it's almost a, a, maybe a little initiation, a little rites of passage moment. It is, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's like learning how to sew your point shoes, like all those those little things that kind of add up to build up your story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I definitely. And so, that. what kind of work do you do now, Tendai? Well, wait, I have one question. Hold off on that. Yeah, I do want to know who your teachers were at North Atlanta High School. Oh, a couple. Um, I had uh, Ray Ransom. She's also okay. North Atlanta alum and a Spelman mm-hmm. alum. Whoop, whoop, shout out Spelman College. Okay. <laughs> um, as well as I am a Spelman alum. Uh, we uh-huh. also had, um, who do I have? Uh, Miss Nikki Sangusto Cruz Bugs. Um, okay. She came okay. in for our, I think our last two years of some of, of high school. And she was one of those teachers that's like, you know, yeah. you might feel like you're going to die, but then you look uh, back and you're like, she made me a beast. Like, she, yes, <laughs> she instilled another layer of hard work in uh-huh. me and, and in my in my cohort of people. Okay. Um, yeah, we kind of circulated. I f- and I feel like once when I came into North Atlanta, we were kind of the last couple of graduating classes before they moved to another building, shifted their audition process. So I feel like I've kind of been in this, like some people have said that a bridge generation that I've been able to be in these spaces that still are holding the knowledge of like the pioneers of these spaces of black movement and are coming from like doing the work from traveling to Cuba, from, you know, understanding the the depths of that, but then also the um, digital world coming in and influencing that as well. So I feel like I've been able to find a, um, a bridge between that. Mm. That's kind of how I've been bridging, I think, from my ballet experience and other, because before Ethnic, I was in a basically all white ballet school in Atlanta. Mm. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and it was, I, I hearing your story about um, with the Baroque, movement it made with the broke dance it made me yes. think of a moment in my ballet school um it wasn't i mean it wasn't as revolutionary if i had i went and read them the act but <laughs> i um i had dyed my hair <laughs> i had dyed like the tips of my locks red and i mean it i was the only little black girl up in there with locks to begin with you know right right i didn't know, right, I didn't know right. with a with an african afrocentric name so me being there alone i think was already challenging what they were used to in that space and so when i had dyed my hair um my teacher um she was like oh she's not gonna perform and we were doing um uh Mar- marzuko marzipan we were doing marzipan, yes. Okay, from we the were. Nutcracker. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I had my, I was, you know, I had my my character shoes and clicking my heels and all of that, and um, uh, but then she was like, oh, she's not, she's not going on stage like this, like not with this hair, this is not going to work. And so I remember <coughs> my mother, um, we kind of we had to make a choice, and I ended up cutting um the tips of my locks off, and she actually saved them. Um, and it was a definitely a moment. Wow. Yeah, my mother saved them. And it was definitely a moment of like just re-understanding how to shift, um, how to shift and navigate through these waters. Through these know, waters. Still, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. And still yeah. get back mm-hmm. up on stage and act like nothing happened and no one knows I was crying in the bathroom. You know, those things that you right. start to layer on. So then when I get to Balefnik, I was like, oh no, I need to be here. This mm. is where I need to be. And I remember when I auditioned, 
I think I missed like the main audition. So I got there for like the second one. And so it was only like three people in there. And I mean, I danced so hard. I gave myself a neck spasm. <laughs> I was like, I need, I, I need to be in yes. here with my people. And they were like, oh, a minute. Wow. My mom took me outside, put a little ice pack on my neck for a minute. And I was like, I'm mm -hmm. good. I can go in now and do the African part. I did the point part. And so, okay. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. That's an I awesome story. Appreciated it. Yeah, you know, as I was saying uh, in our in our before meetup, uh, uh, Arthur Mitchell was very very disappointed that Miss Nina Gilroy had decided to do that project, but he also understood that if his legacy was to go on, it had to happen. Had to happen, you know. Yeah, a, pe a piece of DTH in Atlanta, you know, and I think a oh lot of, yes, yeah, so many. I mean, so many. Black women, specifically that, I mean, just from watching Nina perform, mm. I mean, just amazing. And yeah. definitely so, yeah, it was just so rich, such a rich experience all around, learning, relearning how to paint my face as a woman of color, you know, those mm. things, all those wow. things that you might take for granted. Um, yeah, it was definitely a beautiful time. Wow, wow. Time. Awesome, awesome. Right. I, was, um, I was looking at your work um, that you created um, mm -hmm. uh, to Aretha. Ah, uh, uh -huh. yeah. And I yeah. wanted to, I would love to hear just about your process. Cause I, I mean, I'm also very much so combining music and movement throughout my mm -hmm. work and my creation process. Mm -hmm. As yeah, I am as a mover, and I, I, I mean, hearing you talk about Juilliard and yeah, all of those yeah. influences, how was that as far as like shaping that into a ballet? You know, it's very interesting. You know, uh, Arthur Mitchell, it, it was kind of like a, an embarrassment of riches kind of dancing and dancing hard when I did because we did do the Balanchine, you know, kind of agon, no you know, you don't wear anything kind of like practice clothes ballet, but we also did much more elaborate things. Jeffrey Holder's Dubla, Fall River Legends. So my early ballets, I think I hid behind a lot of stagecraft. Um, and so I, I would say for the first three ballets. And, um, and then for th that particular ballet, after I broke a budget for Arthur Mitchell, he came to me and he said, young man, the next, no, I mean, no one knew at that time what, how to live inside of that music. Um, and so I, I'm very much pleased with the fact that the director of the Juilliard Dance Division now danced in one of my ballets to Aretha Franklin. Like that's in her yeah. playlist, that's mm -hmm. in her head, you know, amongst other things, Alicia Graff. And so, um, so, so absolutely like just doing that music kind of helped to, and I still plan on doing more of that. Mm -hmm. Although I do feel like we're now at a moment where the generations are getting their other approaches may be needed to, to bring that history in, you know. So I'm still working on that to die. But thank you. For oh, that. work. You, 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 you in the work. You've been working before, before I was working. So I'm, I'm trying to keep up. Uh, oh, hush. <laughs> thank, uh, you, thank you. Yo, there are more people here. Vincent Thomas is okay. here. Okay. Hey. Pritchard is here. Henry Lee. Brianna Green, P Pooja Vassan, Ari Almedo, Brianne Granados, Granados, Emile Lenoir, Kyle Marshall, and Angie Pittman is here. Yay. Lots of friends. Lots of awesome. Friends. <laughs> All right, Robert, don't go too far. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you, Robert. Stuart, sure, darling. Tendai. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, cheers again. Cheers again. Why not? Uh -huh. mm. yeah. Welcome. Introduce yourself and do something. <laughs> something, something. Got my drink and my two step. That's right. All right. Hi. Hello, people, beings, virtual, visceral people and bodies. Um, I'm Tendai Nia Ivelia Kaumba. Um, Tendai Shona from Zimbabwe, meaning give thanks. 
Nina, uh, Nia, meaning purpose, Swahili, if you are familiar with Kwanzaa, Ivelia, a combination of my grandmother's names, Eva and Arthelia, and Kaumba, meaning creativity. So I am giving thanks with purpose and creativity to my grandmothers from birth. Um, I am hailing in from Lenape land in Brooklyn, New York. I have been a Brooklyn Knight, a Brooklyn Knight for about now, almost the past decade. Um, and I am the granddaughter. I was very excited to say this just because I've started doing ancestry.com. And my one of my Spelman sisters got me on, and it's just become a beautiful, amazing wormhole of finding everything from uh, mail slips to work slips to marriage licenses and you know all these things that it's um, a struggle for our people to find you know and then even when you do find it it's unfortunate that sometimes you have to question the validity of it right um, but I am the great granddaughter of Manny Jackson and Virginia Weaver Charles Edwards and Essie Edwards um, and Reginald Lloyd, Reginald and Sydney Lloyd. I am the granddaughter of Eva May Lloyd and Fritz DeJour, and also Eva, Eva May Brown, um, and Manny Jackson and Arthelia Jackson. I am the daughter of Ralph Herman DeJour and Dr. Mbahati Kaumba, and I am the sister of Jessica uh, DeJour Smith, the auntie of Brandon Isaiah Smith, uh, Dylan Tashawn Smith, and Austin Fritz Smith, my beautiful uh, chocolate nephew nuggets. And um, I am the partner of Greg Purnell. And I'm here and I'm just so thankful to um, Mama Charmaine for bringing me into this space, into this platform. It's like virtuosic to see and to be able to um, be a part of something that has, like I was talking to um, Shannon last night and I was like, yeah, this is like a time capsule. This is the time capsule. This is the like, when you are questioning, you can, you, you know, you're not alone, you know, and you remember, especially now, you know, we have to remember our, that there's community that we can, that we can and can't touch. And um, that sometimes we're, we got like the same wavelength, the wavelengths of, oh, am I doing this? When is this right? Am I creating work? Am I, you know, and it's really refreshing to have these moments to share space, to witness, to see and be seen. Um, yeah all of that and so i'm here i'm grateful um born in dc washington dc uh reared in buffalo new york for a chunk of time shout out ujima theater collective and um atlanta georgia and now new york so yeah. do you want to go th go through some of the meetings of our minds when we cross paths <laughs> meetings of our minds and we cross paths well i mean so my um the space i'm living in and that i have understood that i am a vessel for is this constant combination of movement and sound so i have um i began singing jazz at 10 years old um that was my first gig at a library with my musical dad, Jerry Eastman, who came out of the Basie, Count Basie band. Um, and my grandmother was a concert pianist. My grandfather was a tap dancer who also in his younger years used to tap with the, um, with the, mm, the brothers. New York? The brothers, with the Nicholas brothers. Nick, okay. I found out that he used to chill with the Nick. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I taught, had a really long, beautiful conversation with my Aunt Shirley, um, my, 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 my late Aunt Shirley, uh, my late great Aunt Shirley, 
um, who would tell me stories of, yeah, you know, we would just go down and hang out and they would just swap steps and they just, you know, would, would tap and share movements and we just go down and have a good old time and found out he ended up touring with the USR and all of these things performing, but then shifted from performing into teaching as an educator. Um, and I think I also realized I come from a revolutionary blood that starts to question how we create art and revolutionary art making, uh, which is how I feel like I found myself with the multiple bodies that I've been able to create and perform with and perform for and embody their work on and in. So I think that's what I think about with these different layers because, um, you know, I was talking to some students earlier this morning in another panel and I find myself now in kind of this interesting purgatory stage of my artistic career, I think, where I have been blessed to be a part of so many amazing collectives of, of, um, of beings like you know, Jawale Willa Zollard with Urban Bushelman, Adia Whitaker, Ashe Dance Theater Collective, Marjani Forte Saunders, Nathan Trice, you know, there's a lot of these amazing beings that I've been able to be a part of these spaces. But the thing that I really value about these spaces is that they're, they, these spaces have also held what Black people already got is this combination of movement and music in, in our bodies and the memory that lives there. And I felt that all of these spaces whether I found out about them or was kind of called to them, constantly helped me find new ways of excavating that within myself. Um, specifically with sound, I've been doing a lot of thinking of music and memory in the body specifically and humming and things like that. And um, how humming is a soothing for the body, how it brings back memory, how it's, how I've, I've seen that it can be the God sound, meaning it's the first sound that we hear from our mothers when we're in the womb um, and all of those things. And those are just like little nuggets. And I, I ramble, so I, I'm, you know, the ramble may come in and out. So you gotta catch the way you catch it when you can. Um, but yeah, I wrote some notes for myself so I didn't completely forget some things that were on my mind today. And then even listening to Mr. Garland, I just, just the history, the richness of, of black dance, you know, and the, the layers of it that, um, that continue to just be unquestionably pushed, you know, and, and bad and the badassery, you know what I'm saying? That I've just been really blessed to be a part of and, and, and have that influence my work. Um, things that I've been thinking about are homage, vibrations, and naming. And so, you know, especially in this pandemic time, I, I know I'm not the only one that's been like, what am I rehearsing for? What do I do all this for? Who is this for? Am I a dancer anymore? You know, all of that stuff. And it's like, okay, what am I doing this for? That's one thing, but who did I get all of this shit from in the first place? You know, I got, this didn't come, I didn't just make this up. There's some other entities that are continuing to walk alongside me, in me, with me, um, that are holding these spaces and holding these spaces because they know um, that uh, they will instill something in me to further my practice. And there's a, 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 a reciprocation of some sort that I've been able to really been blessed to experience. So yeah, I'm. I'm I've just continued to just find layers. I know the theme of my day, the theme of the day is layers, all these layers, just from my ballet world to my West African world to um, my tap world. And that made me think of, you were, y'all were talking about running to the theater on during intermission. And so my mom immediately popped in my mind. My mother also was a dancer. So I also grew up being in theaters, going from her dance rehearsal to my piano lesson to then go like, do oil paintings with Mr. Cooper. So that's the child I've been. And I've also been a child that's been blessed to be able to travel the globe for a majority of my life. Um, I have a sister on my father's side, but I was raised 
predominantly an only child with my mother and had a lot of years of conferences, touring and traveling with her to conferences and being that one little kid sitting in the corner, got to entertain yourself, you know, whether it's a sociology conference, a feminist conference, a revolutionary conference or a dance rehearsal, you know? And so I've, I've been understanding with the homage vibrations and naming how those things have really informed me um, and my personal practice. And so now I've just been uh, re-understanding that, re-understanding what it is of, of self-care, of worshiping self. And I say that in a way of, I've been also very blessed to experience multiple religions um, between being in the church with my grandmother, going to a mosque, going to Passover, all of these things. And I consider myself a spiritual vessel as far as sound and movement as a dancer. And I've been trying to understand how to codify that as a choreographer, as a creator, as a movement maker into uh, what makes me, right? You know, we think of, of praise and worship for these entities, these amazing deities, these, you know, your Oguns that are, that are surrounding you or, you know, your God, whoever that is. Um, and then I think this time has made me try to figure out what it is to build like that real self altar, that real um, going innard, you know, my partner Greg and I, we have You Fly Mothership that we created, which is, I mean, it's an umbrella, but it's the unidentified fly. It's the fact that we live in a Western world that's always trying to codify our DNA, whether it's Henrietta Lacks or, you know, um, whoever it may be, you know, and and they can't, you know, no matter how hard, you know, they try to crack the code, there is a certain, a certain uh, Lowry's, a certain seasoning salt, you know what I'm saying? This like in the helix, the, he, the, in, the, in the DNA itself that cannot be explained. And, and that's a beautiful thing rather than consistently trying to break it apart. I think us as people of color and as black folks, we, we just constantly just accept, accept, you know, we bring, we bring, we bring, we're, we're, we grow, we grow, we recreate, we recycle, you know, and um, lost my train of thought, but yes, yes and yes. So that's where I've been at right now. And I've been um, using that from everything from my scatting that I live in. Um, I learned to scat by listening to horns. Um, and as I continue to grow, I really just appreciated um, scatting as a conversation. Um, there's a part in a work that I created um, entitled Heroin that was the first solo work that I created, but also, I mean, it was the first work technically that Greg and I created together. Um, and it was centered around this idea of this galactic jazz diva, thinking of Billie Holiday, um, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughn, you know, all these amazing beings and what it would have been if there was this amazing galaxy that held space for ev for all their vices, you know, that held space for all their green room rants and their on stage glitter and what what world that would be, you know, I think of even down to like an Amy Winehouse, like these women that have this molecular information that even they don't even try to even ex explain it, they just do it. And they like, you, you know what I mean? You know, there's a, a, a recording of Billie Holiday talking about when she's um, working through some music. And he was like, he asked me if that's an A flat, or that's a B, you the musician, what note did I sing? You know, you know what note that is, you know? And I really appreciated that because, I mean, as a mover, right? We were like, we got to get, it, get, the, get the leg, get the technique. But as a vocalist, you're also like, I want to get the note, I want to get the tune. But I appreciated when, you know, when we talk about these pioneers, when I talk about being like in this kind of bridge generation of like these people that we've been able to physically embrace, whether it's through their student or uh, or them themselves, that they break down what we can, what they consistently try to put us in that to, to explain our, our unidentified fly. But these beings became these beings because they weren't trying to 
codify it. They were just existing. And, but then the, the reality that hits is that these structures that start trying to make parameters on how they are only able to exist in these forms. And, and it's not, it's not okay. You know, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. You know, it's not fair to us as black women, it's not fair to us as black people, as indigenous people is like just in general. And so these are things that I've been trying to ex under, like understand within my work. Um, I'm also a musical theater baby. Oh, that's what I was gonna say with the intermission. My, I was the child being dragged by my mama during intermission into like, into the whiz, into like uh, bring the noise, bring in the funk. So we could get those cheap seats during intermission. Like I was the kid sitting outside with mom like, did we get the box opposite at work this time? Okay, let's do it, let's do it. Um, so like, I, I miss that too. Um, yeah, so I've just been venting and ranting and creating and processing, meditating, yoga-ing, all the ings. Um, and there is a, I've been creating these kind of mantra sounds that seem to be coming out. Um, and one is, let's see. You feel the glory, it's growing inside, pushing on your spine, telling you stand upright. Take all your vitamins, do what you need at night. Been quiet too long, throw chakra to the light. Ancestors told me we better get right. Got numerology counting all the time, tending the windows, doing a creep by. Check who your people are, see if they down or right, cause it's going down. Oh yeah, it's going down, down. Oh yeah, it's going down, down, down. Mm. So that's like one little nugget that I've been working on. And I feel like some of this stuff is coming from, I mean, one within these spaces that I keep finding myself in and as we are as people where we always are connecting this intellectual with the artistic, with the creative, with the innovative and like, boom, amazingness, right? And so thinking of like folklore, ring shout, fables, hymns, um, and the these like um, the melodies that might align the chakras or the melodies that send messages, that send codes. I've been trying to dissect what is a new, not a new age, but a, a reshaping, shifting that continues to push that to the next level, if that makes sense. So I've been trying to play with like my own versions of ring shouts, you know, what it is. Um, I created one within Urban Bushwoman um, because we we said we've done a lot of ring shouts within um, understanding how that work informs Shaolay's creative process. And um, one of the ring shouts that I created um, was another down, down. Uh, go to the mountaintop, pick a cloud, plant it in a crop, let it run wild. Don't you touch that tree. It's got to stay a while, full of purity. Never been docile. Go ahead and hit that road. You better be prepared. Hold on to your soul. And don't you dare be scared. You got your mama's love and your daddy's legs. When you feel afraid, do you hear what I say? We going down, 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 down. Take it down, 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 down. Break it down, 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 down. Hold it down, 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 down. My community could help raise a child full of purity and never been docile. We got to break it down, 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 down. We hold it down, 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 down. So those are like the my the ways that I that I play from the information that I feel like I've accumulated over these vast experiences that I've been really blessed to be a part of. And then how within that, how I push my vocalizing, but then also how it reverberates in my body. And like when I was talking to Mr. Garland, you know, within like ballet practices, finding ballet ethnic was a beautiful space, but coming from already these like Western ballet, white ballet worlds before I got there, 
had already started to do some imposter syndrome things. You know what I'm saying? I already started to embed those things. And so it's been a, I think um, I've been in a, in a place of process, a constant place of process and progress. I'm in a constant place of process and progress of unpacking and repacking, of undoing and redoing, understanding what's sticking to me because it's sticking to me for nourishment and what's sticking to me because I am, uh, you know, maybe blindsided and not letting, not wanting to let go of other, other energies. So um, yeah, I'm talking in circles, but these no, are the not. spaces. <laughs> Thank you, Mama Charmaine. These are the spaces that I'm in. Yeah. You may, maybe one more for us. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. two, one more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, well, I will say there has been a song that I think circulated from um that I did over during quarantine. And um it was called My People. And it was a, a song that we were actually in residency at the time through uh, Dance Base and up at Petronio, like in the woods, you know, and this was in the heat of the protests, like the heat. And it is something else when you are the only black folks stuck at the top of a mountain watching your people tear the streets down. Okay, like it's something else that happens, you know, it, it felt it was a, a combination of rage, you know, but then also this prayer, this longing, this uh, pleading in a way, almost of like, uh, 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 uh. Um, and so within that, we had a really wonderful days of just being able to play with movement, with sound, and this song, My People, came out of... Um, there was a video of a young black boy that was getting arrested on his front lawn. He kind of got chased down by the police and his grandmother came outside and was trying to get them off of her baby, um, you know, and they pushed the grandma, they, they handcuffed her and put her down to the, to the, uh, to the ground. And that's the moment where you like, oh, my people, my people, <laughs> my people. And that is literally, how it came about because I was like oh uh -uh, this is like what 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 you know and I'm I'm the child that like marched with my mama over peace bridges for Columbus Day with you know with native with native communities I'm the the baby that was chilling with Kwame and Kruma you know so I'm like uh uh and I'm in the woods and I can't do nothing okay oh my people my people they steady here trying yeah, my back hurt, my neck hurts from all of the lying. Oh, believe me, we wish we could be somewhere smiling. Wish we could fly away, fly away, fly away. Oh, my people, my people, they steady here crying. Yeah, I got my hand on my forehead, yeah, I'm sighing. Oh, believe me, we wish we could be somewhere smiling. Wish we could fly away, fly away, fly away. Oh, have you heard the whispers from the other side, from the other side? Did you know that's just the sound of your spirit guide, of your spirit guide? Have you heard the whispers from the other side, from the other side? Did you know? Know that's just the sound of your spirit guides. Yes, your spirit flies. Oh, my people, my people, they steady here trying. Yeah, I got my hand on my forehead. Yeah, I'm sighing. Oh, oh believe me, I wish we could be somewhere smiling. Wish we could fly away, fly away, fly away. Fly. Wow. Wow. Robert, come back. I don't know if that's the right note for you to come back, but come back, come Robert. Come back. Wish we could fly away. Wow. Fly away. I was like, ugh. That wow. was lovely, Chandai. It was really, really lovely. Really Thank lovely. You very much.
Oh my god. I'm goodness. I'm quite moved. Quite moved. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank He's spoken you. some things that were very, very uh near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Alvin um had a phrase called blood memories, talk about blood memories. Mm -hmm. And um, and and well, let me back up. When I was a kid, uh, this group that just did a verse, it's Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, mm -hmm. came out with came out with a song called Kalimba Story. And I remember, and I and and all of the kids that were kids then remember hearing the Kalimba mm -hmm. and hearing something that was new and calling us in a, the most bizarre way. Mm -hmm. And even when I hear the Kalimba to this day, it 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 it, it it's it's a blood memory. Alvin believed that there, there were mm -hmm. things that um connected us that were outside of um, our normal understanding, you know? And, um, and there's a great theologian whose name, of course, is gonna escape me now, black theologian, but, but he often used a phrase, he said, blackness is ontological, meaning that um, there, 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 there are, like it's not connected to skin necessarily. It, there, there's a spirit that is uh, above and beyond all of that. And, and when I experienced this though, was when I, the value asked me about return, mm -hmm. we were in there working to this James Brown music and there was an Asian woman by the name of Linda Singh. And she ended up being the blackest thing in the room. I was like, well, where did <laughs> that come from? <laughs> we were like, you know, and, it's, and it just showed me like, you don't know, you don't know. And it happens often in the LA company, Mari Kajuara, um, Oha Naharin's uh, former, now a late wife um, had that that thing, and so mm -hmm. when I heard you talk about, you know, just, just the this connection, and I heard with your 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 songs that you were singing, it brought that in, and I love that. I love that. I don't mind new, you know, mm -hmm. at all. I mean, I'm I'm the I'm from the beginning of the hip hop generation, so that's me. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know? but the thing is that I appreciate. I mean, I I I'm from a heavy music just household so mm. i mean i my mom used to wake me up playing vinyl that was like the wake up call like playing mm. jackson five playing parliament like that was how I woke yeah up. so <laughs> i you know i'm i'm all for it i've had people joke with me of like you may be young but i feel like part of your soul you know somewhere smoking a oh. cigar that's been here before yeah so yeah i definitely and, feel that yeah and, and it reminds you of that epigenetic um idea that that you know we, we we there are things that are literally passed on through our genes mm -hmm. and that are literal things um that are that are very important you know i mean uh listen we're 13 percent of the population and 80 percent of professional sports go figure mm. go figure <laughs> you know 80 percent hey, y'all yeah. there are more people here believe it or oh. believe it. yes yes okay nia love is here Hey. Oh, oh hi, Nia. Nia. <laughs> hey, Nia's here. And Andre Zachary is here. Hello. And who might be M. Bahati Kumba? M. Bahati Kumba. That's my mama. That's your mama. Your mama is here. Oh, yeah. hey, mama. Welcome. <laughs> and probably right. my auntie, too. They both live. Say, oh, hey, family. See hey. now? <laughs> All right, listen, this is where I try to find questions. So I'm going to try to find some questions up in here. All right, up in here, All up right. in here. Y'all going to make me lose my mind. Yeah, up, in <laughs> oh. up in here. Yeah. Oh, God bless him, yes. too. Yes. You know. uh, yeah. I know. Yeah, I have God a soft spot him. for DMX. Oh, oh I know, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. His prayers. His prayers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No joke. Mm -hmm. No joke. Yeah. From the heart. Yeah. 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 Uh oh. We got some. I, oh, I think we lost. I think we lost uh, 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 our, our, our host. All right. But you know, yeah, let, let's send him some prayers for the DMX. I mean, he's a, he's a yes. wonderful artist and um, beautiful, just lovely. I just, too much, too much, too much, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's been a a couple, a, a couple of years, like it's only been one year, 20, but it feels like it's been like multiple years all packed into one. Yeah. So I have a question. Are you from the, were you DMX in high school? Is that when you? Uh, 
Mm, nope. Are, uh, elementary, maybe middle. Elementary. Oh wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Okay. I'm Thirty. I'm thirty-two. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're also a Missy Misdemeanor. You also you from that generation. Oh yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. Missy. 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 You are young and dying. Yeah. But my soul is old though. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in the exactly. medium. Yeah. Yes, yes. We have some yes. seasoning. <laughs> we wow. have we have a question here. Um and it is from Bruce Rodriguez to you, Robert. How inspirational was it learning from Arthur Mitchell? What did you cherish most from him? Oh my God, you know. It was a very interesting uh, uh, beginning to Dance City of Harlem because even though Arthur Mitchell, you know, danced with a, a world-renowned ballet company, New York City Ballet, principal dancer, uh, beloved by many, many people, he was a hood guy. <laughs> he was. He grew up in Harlem, you know, mm -hmm. and so in Harlem was Harlem, you know, and so you know he had to really like he was that guy. So while I love the fact that. He could coach me through some of the some of the balance sheet work that we did. Um, I one of my greatest moments with him was watching Return, um, him a rehearsal of Return and singing the songs under his breath. You know, Mother Popcorn, and he knew them all. He knew them, James Brown. He knew Aretha Franklin. In fact, Aretha Franklin sent him a a homemade ham every Christmas. Oh. Wrapped in foil, yes. Parkour, yes. Every single Christmas. And you know, she wanted to be a ballerina too, apparently. She says it mm. in several interviews. Yeah, yeah, yes. So, oh, hello, um, everybody. Oh, hi, <laughs> Well, who are that. you talking about? All I remember is, Lord, gonna make me lose my mind. Oh, <laughs> and then I was gone. <laughs> you wanted to be a ballerina. Uh, Aretha Franklin, Aretha oh. Franklin, yeah. Black there was a question. Black trivia. Mm -hmm. There was a question from the audience about um, uh -huh. what do I remember most about Arthur Mitchell? And I remember him singing Mother Popcorn, singing all those Aretha songs, Call Me. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know that Arthur Mitchell could have been a huge Hollywood star. He was sought after. I mean, well, if you saw him when he, how he looked when he was young, yeah. you could imagine, <laughs> you know. And they really went, but he decided not to do that. But he was multi-talented. So yeah, that's it, Kimani. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, well, did you have another question, Kimani, from yes. our fabulous audience? Yes. Um, I have your vibrations connect to a rich past. What hum will you send to the young black children? I bet you can guess who's act who's asking that. <laughs> Is that my mama? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> dance org. You know who that is. Oh, hi. Uh, Vincent. I, yes. Yes, Vincent. Aww. Vincent Thomas. Love. love Always love. the great questions. Yes, yes. Always, yes. I mean, um, when I think of hum, I, you know, this little, I feel like this little light is always uh, a base. You know, I think one thing I always reference is when Jaole and we were working on Walking with Train, which was the work based on John Coltrane and us looking into his life and dissecting his artistry, his mastery and the idea of mastery of like you have the base level, which is the foundation of the song. And then you have the extremes of how far you can go. And in the medium, the middle where it meets, that's where the mastery, you know. And so I think with humming, like the baseline, I feel like this little light is always one of those things, but also Amazing Grace, because that's that was mm. one of my grandmother's favorite mm. songs. And that's yes, definitely, yes. you know, that's definitely something I really just, I've encouraged people to close their eyes and first envision a space, whether it's their grandmother's front porch or, you know, their bedroom and just continue to exhale in a hum and let those lead you and that is the melody, you know? I think that's what I would say and hum to younger black, brown, melanated bodies of like, listen to your inner hum and let that create the melody mm -hmm. rather than letting the outside influence that. Yeah. 
I love that. How do you, Robert, how do you talk to the young people when you're either the company or when you're putting a work on the small, the, the ensemble, for example? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I make sure, you know, one of the beauties of our culture is that we've always been highly possessed in popular culture. And, um, and so I've always made it my business to stay on top of that, you know, uh, uh, even to this very day, um, because there are things that are present, you know, one of the things I love about hip hop is that I think it was the first musical art form for black people to really articulate poverty. Um, don't push me because I'm close to the edge, trying not to lose my head. You know, uh, there, there was a wonderful uh, verses with two guys from the Wu-Tang Clan. I'm a big Wu-Tang guy, Wu-Tang <laughs> forever, you know, yeah, got yeah. the W and all that. <laughs> yeah, you know, the they were, um, yeah, they, um, they did a versus the other day and some of the songs, some of the more moving songs were an articulation of the, the life that they lived that was real, you know? And so, so for me, you know, that, that's one thing that um, has always kind of captured me, you know, just hearing that idea. So, so in other words, I, I and Makita will tell you, I'll, 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 me, in fact, me and Miss Endelin Taylor, <laughs> you know, oh, and we're always on top of our stuff that way. So yeah, I know who Cardi is, you know. I, I know <laughs> she is. And I know, you know, and actually I like her for that reason. She's one of the few recent artists that do articulate her poverty, how she grew up, you know, and 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 I think she's partially blessed in that way, you know, because because she acknowledges that. So I stay up to date. I, I, we have to. I mean, you got kids like Makita around because they're quick. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Find your hum, right? Find exactly. your hum. Exactly. <laughs> okay, speaking of Makita, her mama has a question. What are your daily practices, especially up in these COVID times? Oh, uh, do you want to go first and die, or do you want me to go? Or? Uh, yeah, I can go first. Let's okay, see. all right. <laughs> um, daily practices. Well, one, um, you know, I'm quarantining with my partner and love and art. And so we have to make sure we get fresh air. So we actually always do a coffee run or a coffee ride. We got a car over from last year from COVID. We ended up getting a car. So it's kind of our thing to get up and go get coffee every morning. Even throughout throughout quarantine, we found a coffee shop that was open the whole time. And that's like been our, that's one of our things is to get coffee every morning. And then uh, my, my yoga practice has really grown. I've really like honed in on understanding when I don't do it, how my energy is for the day, especially when you're inside, you know, so definitely my yoga practice, meditation practice, and with music, I've been challenging myself to like make a beat every day when I find myself getting bored and then improv forever until I'm tired. Sometimes I record it, sometimes I don't. And then allow myself to rest <laughs> and self-care and cook. <laughs> oh, yes. How about you, Mr. Garland? I actually do a coffee run in the morning as well. Um, and I also, at the beginning of the pandemic, all the gyms were closed. I typically go to the gym in the morning, pretty early, like 5.30 or so. And so I started walking and jogging. <laughs> what? And yeah, and so now I've gotten up to like I pretty much do five or six miles uh, every morning. You know, uh, when I was when I was at my peak, and then the winter hit, and I wasn't able to do anything. So literally, as we're speaking, like yesterday was my first day to get back out and do it again. And so I'm back at that practice. So so that's one thing. And I go to the gym now as well. You know, I'm I'm double vaccinated. I'm I'm fully vaccinated. So. I can at least try that. So, so that's my, my daily thing. And then of course I have my, you know, my meetings and all that stuff too, but that's my daily practice. And of course, prayer, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big old, you know, Christian, you know, so, so Abyssinian Baptist church, you know, I always get some scriptures, some, some spiritual word in there, you know, to get me, keep, keep me grounded. Let me know who's the boss, you know, and then I, and then I jump back. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, we're at time. I, it happens. 
And I'm sorry we missed those other questions. Zoom kicked me out, y'all. It just said, Zoom not responding. And I went, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is where we are, technology. Mm -hmm. But sorry we didn't get to all the other questions, lovely family out there. But Tendai and Robert, did we miss anything? Is there something coming up? Is there a name that you want to call out? Oh, wow. Uh, um, not really. Uh, we have an audition for our school on April 24th. We're all virtual for the summer intensive. So if you want to audition and are still interested in virtual and protecting your child, audition for our school, uh, not only from COVID, but yeah. from the world, <laughs> too. <laughs> and how do they find out? Uh, you can go to our website, and uh, the audition information is there. Absolutely. We have some wonderful guest teachers. Ron Brown's going to be teaching. Aww. Yes. Mm -hmm. See some now. Deborah Austin. Yeah, yeah. You know, we try to give them a little something, something. <laughs> okay then the real yeah. stuff not the appropriated stuff just yeah saying. exactly yeah. there you go Ten um, die um well i'll be performing with ashe dance theater collective on sunday that's the two three days from now um yes yeah, so i've also frequented frequented with kamani and mama charmaine you are one of the coordinators i think for that right <laughs> I am. Like you, I'm trying. I'm <laughs> trying. I'm trying. It's the and community. Other hats. Your yeah, other that's hat. one of the other hats. One of yeah. the many. Many. Hats. many. It's right. the community and and Adia and Ashe yeah, Dance so, Theater. Yeah, they're so doing Adia something Whitaker. as part of Bam's arrivals and departures installation on Sunday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> But they, yeah. they all know now. We're not telling you, <laughs> gentlemen. Yeah, so there's that, and um, working on on new music and creation and innovation with that. Doing bold facilitation work still with Urban Bushelman. I'm not touring with the company, but facilitating and collaborating in other ways. So, getting ready for SLI Summer Leadership Institute for all of the bodies out there that are wanting to dive deeper into their art practice and anti-racist organizing. Is it gonna be virtual again this summer? It's going to be virtual. I don't know all the ins and outs mm -hmm. quite yet, but yeah. I'll see, check in with that. Mm -hmm. And heading back on Broadway in September with um, David Burns, American Utopia. Yes. So yes, that's we right. are supposed to be hitting back when a new theater um, so this will be the a, a whole new world, <laughs> no yeah. problem pun intended, <laughs> um, to see like what this you know pre-COVID performance world will be. So yeah, those are Dang. the. Things. Are y'all gonna have to wear masks? Don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But they need to be some real specially made. Like I need to be able to really extend or something. <laughs> That's because you long, need that, yeah. That's a long time. I mean, just teaching dance. I don't know if well, you've been teaching classes in person, Robert, but I taught a couple of classes at Tisch in person with the mask, and I was like, oh, this is another yeah, level of yeah. breathing. I had to get a third lung. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. It is, it is. So, Definitely. Yes. Wow. Oh, mm -hmm. well, of course, it was so great to have both of you. What what a blessing. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Shamin. Thank, Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Maki, and then we'll come back to me to say a, a shout out goodbye to everybody. Thank you. So to everyone who's watching, just a reminder to like and comment on this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on our social media. We're growing this Black Dance Stories community. Also, a huge thanks to our co-presenting partner, 651 Arts Always, for helping to make Black Dance Stories continue to happen. You can check out all the wonderful things that they're doing on their social media. Their Instagram is at 651 Arts. So next week is Amy Hall Garner and Imani A. Payne. So save your next uh, Thursday evening. And <laughs> See you next week, and I'll pass it back to Mama Charmaine.
Yes, thank you all family for hanging with us, for staying with us and being so humble about the support that you give. We need your support to stay strong. Yes. Now go on out there y'all and get into some good trouble. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, like the good congressman said. Mm. Cheers. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs>